fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Rico. Are you Silver? The stage from St. Louis rolled along the trail toward Leeton. Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, had taken the stage from Fort Davis after spending a few days with friends. The only other passenger was a young and beautiful girl who had dozed most of the time since Dan had entered the coach. As they neared Leeton, she looked at Dan closely and smiled and spoke. You're quite young to be traveling alone, aren't you? Oh, no, ma'am. I live out here and I'm used to it. I'm going to join my friends in Leeton. Oh, then you live at Leeton, is that it? No, not all the time, but we're staying near there right now. My mother lives there. I haven't seen her for several years. I've been back east going to school. In fact, she left me there with my grandmother when she and Dad came out here. Oh, uh, what's your mother's name? <laughs> now, isn't that silly of me? I meant to introduce myself. I'm Nancy Winslow. Winslow? Yes. What's your name? My name's Dan Reed. Do you know a Mrs. Winslow and Leeton, Dan? Your mother's a widow now, by the way. No, I don't recall that name, ma'am. Well, it doesn't matter. It may be that Mother doesn't live right in town. In fact, I believe she has a ranch near there. Oh. Um, perhaps you can come to the ranch and see us sometime. Oh, I'd like to very much. The way you said that is quite a compliment, Dan. I'll certainly expect you to call on me at the ranch, so don't disappoint me. Gosh, Miss Winslow, I won't forget, honest. I'll tell you all about the West. That's a bargain. And I'll tell you all about the East. We'll have lots of fun, Dan. You just wait and see. When the stage arrived in Leeton... Dan went to the livery stable where his horse, Victor, was waiting. A short time later, he was with the Lone Ranger and Tonto in their camp outside of Leeton. It's good to have you back with us, Dan. Did you have a nice trip? Yes, sir. The trip back was fine. The trip back? <laughs> what was so special about that? Well, there was a beautiful lady on the stage with me. Golly, she was nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's plenty good reason for Dan to like ride. Her name is Nancy <laughs> Winslow. She said her mother has a ranch near here. Miss Winslow's lived back east with her grandmother most of the time, so her mother's almost a stranger to her, she said. Winslow. 
me hear that name somewhere. Yes, so have I, Toto. Well, Dan, uh, give the horses some water, will you? Yes, sir. I'll be right back. Why you send Dan away, Kim Sabi? Toto, the only Mrs. Winslow I know of around here is Belle Winslow, who owns a cafe in Leeton. Belle Winslow? But she hard woman, not have good name. I know. Belle Winslow runs Leeton with an iron hand. She stops at nothing to force people to do what she demands. I came here because I heard of her crooked dealings, Toto. Ah, me no. You think maybe daughter not know Kimasabi? Dan's a pretty good judge of people. And he seems quite taken with Nancy. It'll be a shock to the girl when she discovers her mother's reputation. Girl tell Dan she go to mother's ranch. Well, uh, Belle Winslow owns a big ranch outside of town. It may be that she'll try to keep her daughter from finding out about her. Oh, here comes Dan now. I forgot to tell you, sir. Miss Winslow wants me to come out and see her at the ranch. Do you uh, think it would be all right? Well, then, I guess it will be all right. In fact, I'll be curious to know just what you think of the girl's mother when you meet her. Meantime, at the luxurious Winslow Ranch House, Nancy was trying hard to get used to the mother she had known so little. Belle Winslow, a woman in her middle 40s, was continually on her guard in front of her well-mannered daughter. She was proud and a little afraid of the beautiful Nancy, and she went to great lengths to hide the hardness of her nature beneath a veneer of what she considered genteel respectability. But to anyone who knew the real Belle, it was plain to be seen that she was under a severe strain in the act she was putting on. After Nancy had been settled in her room, the two women had tea served in the living room, and Belle tried to carry the conversation. Uh, <coughs> oh, well, Nancy, dear, I, I've been uh, looking forward to this moment for many years. So have I, Mother. Uh, oh, dear. Hearing a grown girl like you say, Mother, makes me seem so old. Oh, but I think you look quite young. Really, I do. How nice. I'm terribly anxious to get into that unique town. It seems so wild and woolly. Oh, now, Nancy, you you forget about Leeton. It, it's such a dirty place and much too rough for a girl like you. You find plenty to do out here, I'm sure. But, Mother, don't you ever go into town? Uh, oh, very seldom, Nancy. I, I, uh, I let my foreman do the marketing and all that. Why, Mother, you sound almost snobbish when you say that. Oh, I like a quiet life, Nancy. I... Oh, excuse me a moment, darling. Well, you better... Hey, what's the idea? Shut up, you fool. I told you not to come here, didn't I? And I told you to keep those other hombres from town away, too. Sure, but oh, I got... I'll step outside a minute. Now, listen to me, big boy. While my kid's here, I don't want to have... we got word from Blackie Martin over in Fort Davis that a masked hombre riding a big white stallion's in this neighborhood trying to get the goods on you. What? Blackie says it's a lone ranger. The lone ranger, eh? So he's snooping around trying to hog-tie me for the law. I've heard of him. What are we going to do about it? If he finds well, out that... Just you leave that hombre to me, Tex. I'll figure out some way to clip his spurs and turn the tables on him, or my name isn't Bill Winslow. Now, get back to town and stay there. Adios. What was it, Mother? Uh, Something important? Uh, listen, kid, I... <coughs> <coughs> oh, dear. My voice just won't behave when I... I feel a cough coming on. Uh, that was just one of the men, Nancy. Uh, something about the ranch, you know. Oh. Now, uh, you have more tea. Tell me all about yourself. The following day, Dan Reed went to the Winslow Ranch House. 
He was talking to Nancy when Belle entered the room. Yes, isn't it nice, Dan? Nancy, darling, I do hope you... Who's that boy? Good afternoon, Mrs. Winslow. Wait a minute, I want to know who he is. What's the matter? Dan came to see me. I asked him to. Oh. Really, Nancy, my head's bothering me today. For the moment, I thought... Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Winslow. I'm sorry you have a headache. I'm Dan Reed. Yes, Mother. I met Dan on the stagecoach. We became friends. I invited him to come out to see me. Oh, of course. We're very glad to have you, Dan. Uh, Did you come through from St. Louis, too? Oh, no, ma'am. I got on at Fort Davis. See, I've been living here near Leeton with friends temporarily. I see. That's strange. I have many reeds around town. Uh, That is... uh, I haven't heard that there were any people there by that name. Well, after all, Mother, since you get to town so seldom, I'm sure there's a great many who come and go that you don't hear of. Sure. Yes, that's so. Well, if you and Dan will excuse me, I'll go rest a while. Oh, yes, do, Mother. It'll help your headache. Dan and I'll chat a while. I hope you feel better soon, Mrs. Winslow. Thank you. I'm sure I will. I'll see you again, Dan. Your mother's awfully nice, but, well, I don't think she liked me very well. Oh, of course she liked you, Dan. She just doesn't feel well right now, that's all. Now tell me everything you know about this wonderful big country out here. I'm dying to learn about it. Meantime, Belle Winslow went through the kitchen and out the back door to the bunkhouse to find the ranch foreman. A few minutes later, she was in earnest conversation with him. Now, look here, Pete. I told you what text came about yesterday, remember? Yes, ma'am. Have you thought of a plan? Now, listen a minute. Right now, there's a kid at the ranch house talking to my daughter. A boy about 14 or so and plenty smart looking. Where did he come from? That's what I want to find out. Nancy says they met on the stage, and she invited him to come here. In that case, what do you he want? He got on the stage at Fort Davis, a short way from here. I suspect that somebody planted him on that stage, just to get to know Nancy so he could come out here spying. Maybe you're right, ma'am. I'll find out if I'm right. I want you to follow that button when he leaves and see where he goes. Find out whose kid he is, Savvy? I Savvy. I'll be ready to trail him as soon as he leaves. I'll find out all there is to know about him before I come back. You can bet on that. It was dusk when Pete returned to the Winslow Ranch after trailing Dan. He reined up hurriedly and hastened up the front porch. you riding up. Where's Miss Nancy? Fixing up for supper. What'd you find out? Plenty. That kid was just what you thought he was. A dirty little spy. I thought so. Go on. I followed him like you told me to, but he didn't go to town. Where did he go? He went to a camp in the hills. Camp in the hills? Yes, him. And then I saw him talking to a masked hombre. He was tall and big. The Lone Ranger. That's just what I figured. There was a white stallion in the camp and an Indian. So the Lone Ranger planted that kid on the stage. Pete, you sure you weren't seen? Yeah, I made sure of that. Bye. (laughs) Things are working out my way now. I'll get that snooping masked hombre out of the way for good. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After discovering that Dan Reed was in contact with the Lone Ranger, Bill Winslow made careful plans. One afternoon, a few days later, when Nancy and Dan, at Bill's suggestion, had gone riding, Bell rode to town and entered her cafe. Hey, here comes Bell. Well, what do you know? Guess you can't stand staying away. Howdy, boys. Guess things have been kind of dull without me around here, eh? Yeah. How about it? That's right, Bill. Don't seem like the same place. Yeah. When do we get a look at your daughter, Bell? Enough of that. Just forget about that daughter of mine. All you understand, she's a real lady. You're lady enough for us, Belle. Isn't she, boy? Thanks for the compliment. That calls for a drink on the house. Drinks all around, mate. Yeah. Step up and get them, boys. Drinks all around. Tex, get Joe and come back to my office. What's up, Bill? I got some news for you, and then we got some planning to do. Don't keep me awake. Joe's in the other room. I'll get him, and we'll be right back to your office. Here we are, Bill. What do you want us for? Oh, howdy, Bill. Sure good to see you back. Sit down, boys, and be comfortable. Sure. Remember what you told me about that masked man, Tex? Sure do. I've been keeping my eyes open, but so far nothing I found is... out where he's holed up. You have? Just said so, didn't I? Go on. We're listening. Now, look. There's a kid who's got sort of a... A boyish crush on my daughter Nancy, see? He comes out to see her and they go riding together. But that button's smarter than Nancy knows. He was planted on the stage. So as to get to know her and spy on me. Now I'm gonna get ill. The next afternoon, Dan, who was expected, had just arrived at the Winslow Ranch House and was in the living room with Nancy and her mother. Uh, why don't you get Dan a big slice of apple pie, Nancy? I'm sure all boys like apple pie. All right. I'll bring some milk, too. As Nancy left the room, Belle walked to the window and, unnoticed by Dan, signaled to Pete, who was waiting outside. A moment later, he entered excitedly. Hey, Mrs. Winslow, something's happened. I... Uh, I didn't know you had company. Dan's a family friend, Pete. You can speak freely. What's happened? Rustlers, that's what. Rustlers? Yes, ma'am. Some of our cattle from the South Range. One of the boys saw him driving the cattle away toward the South Basin in the canyon. Did he get a good look at him? Yeah, lucky for us, he did. He said one of them was masked and riding a big white horse. The other was an Indian. Well, to send one of the men for the sheriff right away. Yes, sir, Mrs. I... Winslow, I, I, I just remembered I was supposed to meet some friends of mine. I, I can't wait for the pie. Tell Miss Nancy I'm sorry. <laughs> the button's gone to give the word. Yeah. The Lone Ranger will try to catch the rustlers to clear himself. Did you put the cattle in the south basin? Yes, sir. Come on, Victor. There he goes. Now, get over there and join Texan Joe. I'll be along soon. Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, oh, boy. Let's go. Dan, what brings you back so soon? I heard the foreman talk, tell Mrs. Winslow that someone stole cattle and took them toward the South Basin. Whose cattle? Mrs. Winslow's. The foreman said the rustlers were a masked man on a white horse and an Indian. That not good, Kimasabi. Uh, look here, Dan. Have you told Mrs. Winslow about us? Oh, no, sir. I I did tell Nancy, but she promised not to tell anyone else, and I know she wouldn't. See, get the horses, Dan. Yes, sir. You think it tricked Kimasabi? I thought of that, but I'm sure Dan's faith in the girl is justified. Bill Winslow doesn't know we're here or what our purpose is, so far as I know. And what we do? We leave Dan here. You and I will ride over to the South Basin to investigate. Oh, 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 oh. Here are the horses. They're good. Dan, Todd and I are riding to the South Basin. Hey, you stay here until we get back. Yes, sir. Hold up, Todd. Steady, big fella. Uh-huh. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh. 
Meantime, Nancy, becoming restless at the ranch, decided to take a ride. She left the house and went to the corral where one of the ranch hands saddled a horse for her. Easy, fella. There. Get mount up now, Miss Winslow. Thank you. Steady, boy. Tell me, do you know where Mother went? Oh, I recollect I heard her say she was riding over to the South Basin. The South Basin? Where is that? Well, uh, turn left on the trail at the entrance and ride about a mile till you come to the canyon. Uh, the basin's just beyond. Oh, yes. I rode that way yesterday. Thanks. Get up, boy. Meantime, Bell had ridden along a narrow canyon which came to a dead end in a roughly circular basin within which about 50 head of cattle were milling restlessly. Just inside the basin, Bell met the foreman, Pete, and Tex. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa, whoa. Where's Joe, Pete? I told him where to find the Lone Ranger's camp. He went to keep watch. And as soon as the masked army and the Indian head this way, Joe's going to hit for town and bring the sheriff. Good idea. Now listen, I'll keep out of sight, see When that lone ranger shows up, you and Tex see to it that he stays here until the sheriff comes. Even if you have to gun him down to do it. I'll help if necessary. Don't worry. We'll see that him and the Indian stays all right. That's right, Bell. You can count on it. Look out, Tex, a rattler. That was close. But you got him, Pete. Oh, you crazy galoot. Those shots are stampeded the cattle. Mount up, Pete. They're heading this way into the canyon. Right. Easy to pull, on. pull over to the side. Quick. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Smoke Bell, your daughter. She's right in the path of the cattle. She'll be trampled to death. She sees him. She's trying to turn around. Her horse is down. Oh, Pete, Pete, Nancy hasn't got a chance. She'll be killed, sure. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto turn from the trail into the canyon. Tonto, look. Someone riding along the canyon ahead of us. A girl. I wonder if that's... She was hunting. Cattle coming out of base in the head. They're stampeding. The girl, her horse has fallen. Get over to the side, Tonto. I'll try to reach her. Come on, away. Faster, boy, faster. Help! Help me! Get up! Stand up! Nancy, who for a moment had lain powerless to move as she watched the approaching herd in terror, seemed to gain strength as the Lone Ranger shouted order. She got to her feet quickly and turned a fear-stricken face toward him as he slowed the great silver momentarily at her side. Easy, Silver. We'll be trampled by horses now. Reach up and take hold quickly. Yes. Now, hang on. Come on, Silver. Racing before the frenzied herd, the Lone Ranger guided Silver with his extra load off to the left where Tonto had found safety in a large crevice in the canyon wall. They reached the crevice a split second before the herd thundered by. Oh, Silver, hold. Oh, we're safe. Oh, we're safe. Leave that girl down. Good. Uh, you all right? Yes. Yes, thanks to the mask, man. Well, frankly, for a moment, I, I didn't think we'd make it. Oh, you must be Miss Winslow. Yes, I am. But how did you know? Dan told me about you. Oh, then you must be his friends, the one that he told me about. Yes, that's right. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa, whoa. Nancy. Oh, Nancy, darling. I'm all right now, Mother. Uh, Mister, I... I saw what you did. I don't know how to thank you for saving my daughter's life. Thanks aren't necessary, Mrs. Winslow. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Look, boss, what do you want us to... Please, Pete. Uh, uh, take my daughter back to the ranch. She can ride with you. Oh, but, Mother, I... Please, darling. I want to talk to this masked gentleman. I'll follow you shortly. All right. Let me help you mount. <laughs> thank you, Tonto. Goodbye. Until we meet again. Bye. Go with him, Tex. Yes, sir. Get him out. Get him out. As Nancy rode away with Pete and Tex, Belle stood staring after her. Conflicting emotion showed on her face for a moment. Then she turned to face the man who had risked his life to save her daughter. A new expression came into her eyes as she spoke to the Lone Ranger. Uh, look, mister, I... I know you came to get the goods on me, but 
Well, I, I'm giving up the cafe. And... <laughs> uh, Dan told me Mrs. Winslow was a well-spoken woman. You don't sound like her. Oh, but I don't... Uh, very well. I'd like to forget being Belle. Nancy and... never knew Belle. For her sake, let's both forget her. Huh? Okay, Masabi. Here oh. comes Sheriff, another fellow. Go oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. <coughs> you all came to town and said for me to come out to get a couple of... Hey, who's the mash man? Uh, a lawman like yourself, Sheriff. Hey, what the devil do Shut you... Shut up, mean? Joe. Uh, I mean, please don't interrupt. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff, thanks to this gentleman, certain plans I have can be carried out. You see, I, I'm i giving the cafe to the boy. What? On one condition. That uh, all of you forget the bell you used to know. For my daughter's sake. Well, what do you know? <laughs> the way you talk, I'd never connect you with the bell who owned that cafe. That's the way I want it. We'll leave now, Mrs. Winslow. Steady, easy, big fella. Good luck. Adios, adios. Montenegro. Goodbye. And thank you for everything. Hey, look, Bill, I I, I don't get Mrs. all that. Mrs. Winslow to you, you mutton <laughs> Not still in him. <laughs> Say, who was that mass man, Bill? Um, I mean, Mrs. Winslow. Oh, really, Sheriff? You should know him. From the change that's come over here, I guess I ought to at that. Why, oh, that mass hombre is... Uh, I mean... The gentleman you just met is is my very dear friend, the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.